Hello and welcome to Crafting Unedited. My name is Sierra and today I'm going to be showing you how to sublimate on can koozies. These fun things. So I order mine off of JPI Blanks. Um, and they do run a really good sale every now and then on these and it's just they're I think they're the neoprene ones. Either way, <clears throat> they're thick. They're not like um, acrylic or anything. They're just the neoprene. And they have a ton of colors. These are just the ones that I like to sublimate onto because the images show up. <laughs> I'm sure that you could probably do like the royal blue one too, but only with like a solid black um print but these are the colors that seem to print well as well as white and a couple of others i just ran out of white so this is what i got this is what i'm pressing um so a few things that you need sorry i'm a little disoriented my camera wanted to be an a-hole this morning so i'm using my phone hopefully the quality is just as good <laughs> all right so you're gonna need can koozies i use neoprene ones um, they don't have to be sublimation ready. Um, these work just fine as they are. You're also going to need some heat resistant tape, your sublimation prints, a heat press set to, got to change that, should be 385 for 50 seconds. There you go, for 50 seconds. Reason being, 385 is normally what I press all of my sublimation prints at unless it's a thicker material like acrylic or um, a tumbler. Tumblers always 400, always. Uh, but for shirts and cloth items, I always do 385. For t-shirts, I usually do 60 seconds, but for these, I do 50. Why? Because this stuff on the inside will melt. The other thing that you do need, two things, is butcher paper and Teflon sheets. The Teflon, you're not going to put on top, you're gonna to put inside. I have pre-cut this. I had some more. I had some more that I pre-cut. But you can use the Teflon sheets as well. I use this, um, basically, you just put it inside of the koozie, like so. I know I make some weird faces, sorry guys. Just like this. So you can see it through the bottom. And just align it up. You could do the same thing with butcher paper, which is probably what I'm gonna do for some of these because I only have so many, or I only have enough space on this one for two. <laughs> so basically, this is step one, other than pre-pressing your heat press and having your prints ready. But you want to do this because if not, the inside of your koozie will melt to itself. And we don't want that. Get it nice and flat in there. There you go. Just like so. Beautiful. And then, so a couple of things. I use this heat resistant tape came from Amazon. Um, just be very careful, read the reviews on what you're ordering because some of it is leaving some residue. I haven't ran into that issue yet, so uh, I can give you the link to my tape, but it's just the first heat resistant tape that popped up on Amazon, honestly. <laughs> and it's orange, it's not blue. It's orange and I use the thin stuff. I did have the thick stuff as well. The paper that I'm using is Hypoo uh, sublimation paper. You can see right there. Uh, they did send me this, so mad props to them. They sent me this, some ink, and a few other ob um, items that I'm going to do a quick review on at some point in time when I get the time to use them. But the paper, A plus so far. I absolutely love this paper. It is, I don't know if you can tell, but this is it. This is the sublimation side. This is the non-sublimation side. The non-sublimation side has like a pink tint to it so you can tell which is which. 
Um, so far, I've compared it to A sub, and I really like it a lot better. Um, it does tell you right here on the back, like some light instructions there. Um, but I love it so far. Images are super vibrant, super bright, really crisp and clear. All right, so we're gonna get this party started. Um, more butcher paper for the insides of these. Cut these up real quick. Does not need to be perfect. I thought I had everything prepped and ready to go so that we could just press and go. <laughs> Sorry guys. I totally forgot about this part. Oh, that's not going to be wide enough. Ah. You want to make sure that it's wide enough to go all the way across the inside of the tumbler. Or the tumbler. The koozie. So, we're going to put this in here. I find it easiest to grab from the bottom to pull it through. It's going to get a little crumbly if you didn't measure it, like me. That's okay. As long as it doesn't affect the outside of your koozie being flat, it don't matter. Swan. Yeah, I'm sure there's other things that you can use on the inside of these, but... This is the most inexpensive way that I have found. And it works. If it's not broke, don't fix it. <laughs> that was something my grandma always told me. I'm sure that, you know, you guys have heard it before, but she has always said that if it ain't broke, don't fix it. <laughs> this one's a little short, but that's all right. We'll just make sure that this one is on the edge there. See what I mean? It's like missing this part. So I'll just put this part outside of the press. Now, what you want to make sure that you do is that you have light, light to medium pressure on your heat press. Do not put a lot of pressure on your heat press for these. They will squish, they will flatten, they will melt. And they'll look ridiculous. I had one. I thought I had one down there that you could I could show you an example of it being squished and flattened and all that mess. Yes, I've melted them before. Yes, I've really melted them before to the point where there was no return. <laughs> so if you get some that's like the insides like this and you don't want to redo it, literally just cut right down the middle of the paper and then that will create that'll flatten it out a little bit there you go beautiful okay have the insides of all of my koozies filled with butcher paper now i'm going to pick my designs for each of them so and then i'm going to tape those as well. I'm going to cut this Teflon sheet on these two. There we go. There we go. If you want to see what I'm doing over here, I'm just trying to decide which koozie, which image I want on which koozie. So I think that I want that on the blue one. Oh my god, there's so many options. I printed too many. Is that a thing? Can I print too many? I think I'm going to do really dragon ass on this light pink one here. So when I line these up, when you print these, so first things first, when you print these, I do three and a half inches wide, or sorry, three and a half inches tall by 3.25 wide. Um, and then I literally, you mirror, of course, but when you cut them, just cut a rough design around it. So then when you're placing it onto your koozie, you want to make sure that it's straight, first of all. 
Doesn't have to be perfect though because it's a koozie and it's going on a can and it's not going to be straight when they put it on anyway. But you wanna make sure that you're far enough away from these seams that you're not going to get any ghosting on the sides because those do press flatter. Then you're just gonna take some heat resistant tape. I just put one right there on the top. I don't overdo it. That one's ready. This one I'm gonna do, you can't sit with us because one, it's Hocus Pocus and two, it's that bold pink, which reminds me of, why did I just, Mean Girls. I don't know why I forgot the name of that movie. That was bad. <laughs> mean Girls. I'll show you what these images look like later. I got them off of, shh, don't tell anyone, an SVG dump site. I'm not selling these, so I don't really care. All right, and then, uh, of course, Baby Yoda is gonna go on this green one. I don't know how brilliant of an idea that is because it is a green base. But we're gonna see how well these sublimate. It's pretty straight. I've done these before and I know that the darker colors show up pretty well. Not 100% sure on the lighter ones, so we're gonna see how that goes. I thought I had a red one over here to press. I left my red one over there. <clears throat> one more. I couldn't do this part beforehand because, you know. I'm gonna put this one, Hocus Pocus okay, Mom, on the red one. I have yet to press a red one, so I have no idea what it's gonna look like. It is a pretty dark red, so. I am kind of nervous about this one because I made it just a little bit too big, so it does kind of go over to the edges a little bit, but we will see. I'm Surrounded by Idiots is going to go on the screen just because it's neutral colors. And, I don't know. It sounds good. Sounds good. Again, I am very much so an eyeball person. I just eyeball the things 99% <laughs> of the time. I would say 99, I'd say 90, 90% of the time they turn out really well. This one I'm not 100% sure on because it's gonna. Uh, let's go. Another light pink. Oh, it's got a flamingo on the back, whatever. No. Let's see how this one turns out. Sorry, my box of canned goosies is down there. I'm not just <laughs> disappearing. <laughs> You might hear some ruckus in the background. My kids just woke up. Oh, my hair. Don't mind me, y'all. It was ruffling. Am I the only one, so while I'm doing this, am I the only one that missed a whole year? <laughs> it's 2021, and I keep forgetting about 2020. All right. We're all ready to press. So, like I said, 385. For 50 seconds, five zero. Light to medium pressure. You want to go more on the light side than the medium side, but you want to have enough so that it makes contact. That's really it. So we are going to pull this out, swing this away so that I don't burn myself like an idiot. We're just going to line all of these koozies up like so. This blue one that's missing part of the bottom there, as far as that butcher paper, is going to go on the edge there, like that. Oh, 
morning. Put your paper? Told you. <laughs> Ignore that. Put your paper for the top. To go on top of all of them. And then I have to swing away. I don't have the clamshell. So I just gauge. Gonna lift that a little bit there based on how this looks. Again, with the eyeballing. And then we're just going to slide this under here. Make sure that I've got it all the way under there. This blue one is like right on the edge. And then whip us. See, too much pressure. Still too much pressure. There we go. Then lift it a little bit more as it's on top. Can't move it off of it, which is good. I might want to set the timer. <laughs> so you want, like I said, light pressure. You just want it enough to make contact with what your press with the koozies. Um, and I can tell that just by lifting my butcher paper and seeing that it's pretty flat on all of them. Um, if you want to give it just a little bit more pressure, that's fine, but you do not want as much pressure as you do for like a t-shirt. Even with t-shirts, you only want like medium pressure. Reason being is because if you do heavy pressure, you're going to have the outline of the image that you cut. Now, if you cut close enough to it, it's not that big of a deal, but for me, I do very, very rough cuts for my sublimation transfers. Why? Because I hate weeding which is why I switched to sublimation. And two, I hate trying to do intricate cuts, which is why I have a Cricut. <laughs> but if you do it right, you don't need to worry about either one of those. So we lift, turn the press away, pull this out. And I'm just gonna do a very quick check on my prints to see how they turned out, see how the quality of them are and I'm thinking we're pretty solid yep we're good so I'm gonna turn my press off always turn the press off and this is what one thing that I wanted to show you with the red especially so reason that you want to use more of a dark print for like the red and the darker colors is even on the butcher paper. I don't know if you can even see that. But on the butcher paper right there where the red koozie was, you can see the red dye pulled through to the butcher paper. Now that's a good reason to have the butcher paper there. But if you do a different color of, um, like a lighter color of transfer on a red koozie or even a red shirt, that dye from that material is gonna push through your ink. What that means is that if you do a yellow image on a red shirt, you're gonna have an orange image in the end because you know, red and yellow makes orange. And that's why. Not because your image is wrong, but because the dye from your shirt is off. All right, so we are going to pull these images off. And this is what I was talking about. I pressed just a little too hard, but you can see the outline of the print, but that's not that bad. It'll come out pretty easily. But as you can see, I did not melt them. They're still just as thick as they were. Pull this out. You've got you an awesome can koozie. You can't sit with us. There's one. Oops, that's a bad idea. Put this over there. Water roller. This one you can see a little bit more. The press line. And the tape. I squished the tape. But like... I was so worried that this wouldn't turn out because of how green it is, but oh my God, I love it. It's kind of crooked though. Always check. <laughs> I think the image might be crooked itself. I don't know. Oh, either way, whatever. I love it. It's adorable. Next, red one. See, you can't really tell that it's a Hocus Pocus mom. Like it has hocus pocus images on the inside. 
And then the yellow that was right here is now orange. I still like it though. All right, and then this is the blue. This was yellow, this inside line here. This was orange or like a pinkish color and the inside one was blue. You can still kind of see the blue if you like look a little hard. <laughs> but overall, I like it. Now for the I'm Surrounded by Idiots. Ooh, ooh, ooh. really like this one it's pretty sweet it's supposed to have that vintage look like if you're looking here and you see like the cracking it's supposed to look like that I love it <laughs> two more Oh, another one that's really... I love these. I am obsessed. Really dragging ass today. Story of my life. And... I want to do hot girl-ish, but I can't stop eating fat girl-ish. If this is not the epitome of my life, I don't know what is. This one. This one. And this one are an accurate description of my lifestyle. <laughs> All right, guys. So let's wrap this up. We're going on 21 minutes. And I wanted to do it an under 30. So we are right on target. That, my friends, is how you sublimate on jacuzzis. 385 for 50 seconds. Five zero seconds. Light to medium pressure. Use Teflon or butcher sheet in between the koozie so that you don't melt it together and use butcher paper on top of as well. You can use any canned koozie, any, except for dark ones. It's probably not going to work very well, especially black. <laughs> you can't sublimate on the black. It doesn't work. Um, it doesn't have to be sublimation ready. And most of the time you can get them for under a dollar each and you can sell them for about three to four dollars a piece. Mad profit for such an easy project once you perfect the process. So simple. So go ahead, like this video, subscribe to my channel, wherever that little subscribe button may be on the screen <laughs> and comment below if you have any questions, any recommendations, any advice, anything. I'm happy to hear from you. Until next time, we'll see you later. Bye-bye.